Jason Sedaitis here on behalf of IK Multimedia, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get up and running with iRig USB and iRig HDX on a Windows-based desktop or laptop computer. The first thing you're going to want to do before connecting your iRig USB or iRig HDX to your computer is head on over to the IK Multimedia site. You're going to want to log in to your existing account Go up to our little red man icon up here in the top right corner, head over to driver downloads, and you'll notice down here at the bottom it says iRig USB ASIO driver for Windows. I would click the Windows version here, I would click to download that, after that's downloaded, I would click through that, unzip the file, and then proceed to install that onto my system. After installing the audio driver for iRig, you're gonna to wanna to head over to your digital audio workstation of choice and make the appropriate settings within there. Now, it goes beyond the scope of this video to be able to cover every possible DAW out there, but it's probably going to be a very similar set of steps regardless of which DAW you're using. You may have to refer to the owner's manual of your particular DAW to figure out where exactly the various menus you would have to access to make the appropriate settings. I'm going to be utilizing my DAW of choice, which happens to be Cubase Pro 12 today. So first thing I'm going to do is head up to the Studio tab up here, and I'm going to go to Studio Setup. Now I'm going to go to Audio System. Now you'll notice here it says ASIO Driver. I'm going to need to select iRig to be my audio device of choice. And if I go down my list, since I have already installed the ASIO Driver, I can choose my iRig device right here. Now we are going to want to go into there and set our latency appropriately or our buffer settings. Right now I'm set at 512 samples. If I'm going to play live with that, I may feel a little bit of a delay. So I'm gonna to try to get this down as low as I can. Let's maybe go to 32 samples for now. And you'll notice when I do that, my latency numbers fall dramatically. So I'm gonna hit okay. We're now set up so that Cubase is talking to iRig as the audio interface. Next, I'm gonna to want to add a track. Now, if you notice here, I can go to my audio inputs and I only have one choice when I'm utilizing iRig USB or iRig HDX when iRig HDX is not in loopback plus mode. So I'm going to select mono in, which is going to be my guitar input. I'm gonna add that to a stereo track and let's just call this guitar DI. There I've added my track. Now once I plug my guitar into iRig HDX, which is the iRig I've chosen to utilize for this video, I can connect my guitar of choice, I can arm recording on this track, and also arm monitoring, and you'll notice now that I have my DI guitar signal coming into Cubase. I could simply hit record, and I have my raw DI'd guitar right there on that track. From there, I could also add an instance of Tonex to this track if I so desired and wanted to hear what this would sound like with some Tonex guitar tones. I could come over here to Collections, go up to Partners, and choose one of my particular tone models that I enjoy and apply that to the track that we just recorded. Another way that we could work is by applying the Tonex track or Amplitude track as we record. If our DAW of choice allows us to apply effects to our input track, and you'll notice here is my mono in one, I could come over here and have Tonex on that track so that when I record, I'm no longer capturing just my DI track, but what I'm actually capturing is going to be the affected track that Tonex is processing as it goes in. So there you have it. It is as simple as that to get up and running effortlessly utilizing either iRig USB or iRig HDX on a Windows-based computer system.